the last time that you laid eyes on a naked, fat body? And no, your own body out of the shower this morning is not the answer I'm looking for. Right. I'm talking about the times that you catch a glimpse of a person in a body so fat that you have a visceral reaction to what you've seen. It's the same kind of reaction that prompts the schoolyard bully to offload his discomfort by calling his chubby classmate Miss Piggy. Or it might invite the grown man to scream, hey fat ass, at the woman as she's just daring to walk down his street. It's this same uncomfortable reaction that prompts us to hide fat bodies away from the world, even and most especially when that body is our own. And so we just don't see these images often. And when we do, we tend to look and then look away quickly as if we've encountered some sort of tragic thread of the human narrative. Now I can say we here because I'm equally guilty, or at least I was until the end of 2017 when I discovered the Adipositivity Project. Adipose is in the tissue and positivity is in a general sentiment of good regard. Now it wasn't the catchy title that drew me into this project. Instead it was the images that had been captured by this photographer. These were images of people in enormously fat, naked bodies with all of their parts and pieces on display. But it wasn't the show of flesh that stopped me either. Instead, it was the feeling of freedom I could see on the faces of the people in those photos. It was as if they had spent this entire lifetime just hiding behind layers, and for one moment, someone invited them to lose their layers. It looked like they were flying, like maybe they could finally exhale and exist. Now this was an extremely confusing sentiment to me because did they not know what the world would do with photos like this? I certainly knew. I've been carrying around some version of this fat body for most of my life and so I am intimately familiar with the kind of insults that make Miss Piggy and fat ass sound like gestures of affection. And so I couldn't really figure out what kind of reward would be big enough to take a risk of that magnitude. Rather than wonder, though, I decided to research. I found out that the photographer behind the project based all of her work on the very basic principle of desensitization, the idea that we can decrease our negative reaction to a stimulus by way of repeated exposure to the stimulus. In this case, she had chosen the stimulus of fat bodies because she, like I, believes that all bodies, even the fat ones, are worthy of love and belonging. And so she set out to familiarize the world with the fat body, banking on the reality that we are only horrified by that which is unfamiliar to us. So it was a concept I could get behind. But what about these people, these enormously fat, free people? Were they completely unconcerned with their impending social media slaughter because I was worried? I could not figure out how any reasonably sane human being could take the risk of getting naked like that. Until I realized that you only get naked like that when you desperately crave being seen. Being seen. It's a concept that we can all get behind, right? In fat bodies and thin bodies, in black and brown bodies, we want to know the freedom that follows an invitation to lose our layers. And so this had to be about craving freedom, but not any ordinary freedom. This had to be about craving freedom of a very particular breed. It's the kind that spills out, uncovers unexpected places. It's the kind that invites an introvert to a stage to speak a big idea into existence, even if her voice is shaking. It's the kind that invites you to be more of you in the world and me to do the same. So you see, I could recognize this craving for freedom because at the time it existed inside of me. I, uh, when I discovered the Out of Positivity Project, I was putting the finishing touches on a project of my own. It's the Beautiful Project. It's a storytelling collective that invites women to challenge expectations, creating a world where we belong with substance and with strength. And as noble a project as that is, it's a little difficult to pull off when the founder has a secret of her own. You see, my secret was that I couldn't stand to look at my own image in any reflective surface for longer than just a few seconds 
without being filled with rage at a body that failed to comply. I've spent my entire lifetime trying to shrink my body, but here I was left with this, and I could barely stand to look. And so I hid. I found myself always glancing at myself, never really seeing. I'd show up with just enough of myself in the world so that I didn't disappear, but never really show up there. But you see, I was tired of hiding. I desperately wanted to be seen. I was craving freedom, but I didn't know how. But I knew that I wanted something that these people had, so I took a nod from the naked path, and I adopted my own adipositivity project. I started small there. I asked a trusted friend and photographer to do a shirtless yoga photo shoot. Why shirtless? Well, it's my belly that I've been trying to cover up or shrink for most of my life, so I figured that would be a good place to start. A couple of weeks after the shoot, I got notification that my gallery was ready while I was sitting at a red light, so you better believe I pulled that car over as quickly as possible. And with the sun streaming in those windows and my heart pounding in my chest, I opened up this gallery that put this big belly on display. Instantly, I was filled with a sense of rage, very familiar to me, but I was filled with something else too. I was filled with determination. I was determined to see if I could stay with my own image long enough to find something to love there. And after what felt like an eternity in that car, one photo did emerge from the rest. It was this photo. In this photo, all of my fat dissolves into form and function. In this photo, all I can see is the strength in my legs and the openness in my back. All I can feel is the rush of sensation that I know in this pose. In this pose, I am strength and I am grace. And for just one moment in the car that day, I saw myself, yes, as a fat body, but more importantly, as a free body. Now, I wish I could tell you that my moment in the car was all the epiphany I needed, but this personal adipositivity project did not follow a linear path. I recall one morning in particular, I'd woken up with a body that felt at least 10 sizes bigger than normal that day. And as I went to get ready, all I could feel and see was this belly. I went to zip up my pants and I was filled with that familiar sense of rage. However, I had been practicing desensitization for many months. Now before this, what I would do is I would latch on to the offending body part and I would stare myself in the eyes and say nothing but the most despicable things that I could muster. But I wanted more freedom than that. And so I stripped off all of my clothes in the privacy of my bedroom. I took out my full length mirror and put it in front of me. And I did exactly what you would do in a moment like this. I did a naked downward facing dog. <laughs> Okay, so maybe yoga, naked yoga, isn't your thing. Um, but it was the exact thing that I knew I needed to heal me. And so I stayed with myself on that mat because I was instantly filled with rage, but I knew if I stayed long enough that I could find something to love there. And after that extremely long practice, as I lay on my mat, weeping at a sense of homecoming I didn't know was possible inside of this body, I knew that I had to make this personal adipositivity project into a public undertaking. I knew that the women around me needed to know that this breed of freedom was available to them if only they had the courage to strip themselves and be seen. I also knew it's much easier when someone else goes first. And so I decided to be that person. 
I started small here too. I chose the least revealing picture first, but as I hit publish on that first post, I waited for the judgment to come from you that I had spent a lifetime heaping on myself. It never came. Instead, I was flooded with messages from women that said, me too, take me with you. I just want to feel that free. And so bolstered by this chorus of courage, I continued on, losing layer after layer with every picture I posted. But with every layer that I lost, I started to become aware that this was about so much more than my body. This was about every single thing that I hide from the world because I believe the world needs me to shrink in order to fit. This was about how the world was so much less than it should be because I am less of me in it. And this was about the fact that I was absolutely done shrinking. And so I started a list. On this list I wrote everything that I hide from the world. Silly things like the fact that I hate the sound of my own voice and think half of my ideas are pretty stupid. To more serious considerations like the terror that I feel when I think about the fact that you could find out that I lost my home to foreclosure when I was 30, or the reality that eight years after coming out, I am still timid every single time I introduce my spouse as my wife. But you see, I know that the naked path applies here too. And so I went down the list and I devised a strategy for every item on the list. This strategy would first desensitize me to my own shame and second, it would allow me to find a way to tell you about it. And as I went down the list, executing those strategies, things like producing a podcast to get past the horror of my own voice or writing a blog piece that detailed the day that I lost my home, I began to recognize in myself that feeling of freedom I had seen on the faces of those models all of those months before. It was freedom that persisted in the face of fear. It's freedom that persists even now as I stand in front of you, still convinced that when you look at me, you might only see a fat woman with a funny voice full of less than inspiring ideas. But you see, I know now that my most certain path to freedom is to strip the layers that keep me from you. It's to take back the power that I gave to you when I became afraid of what you would see when you looked at me. Now I know what you will see when you look at me. Because I have chosen to let you see all of me. And this kind of freedom, it cannot be contained. It spills over the way I spill over. Every time I hold a person's gaze that used to unnerve me, every time I use my voice instead of silencing my truth, it's in every email I send, every risk I take, every person I love, there is more of me in all of it now, and the world is more than it used to be because I am all of me in it. And I want this world all of the time. I want this world that has enough space for big, fat bodies and big, brave ideas. But this world, it requires all of us. And so I wonder, what is the thing that you hide? Can it be stripped? Can you find the freedom that you crave? Would it be easier if someone else went first? I need this world. But in order to have this world, I need all of you and all of me to be stripped and seen. So come with me and help me make this world full of freedom, one little layer at a time. Thank you.